I just got back from London where I got to see the new LEGO Smart Brick in action with fancy presentations, a few demos showing what it can do and some of the new LEGO Star Wars sets it will be included in. After playing with it myself and asking questions to LEGO employees behind its development, I have many thoughts and things to share about it. So in this video I'll go over the Smart Brick specs, some of the LEGO Star Wars sets it will be included in and its features and then my own personal opinion about it. The Smart Brick is part of a new system called the Smart Play, which primarily focuses around this new 2x4 sized piece, smart tags and smart minifigures that can all interact with each other in many different ways, hoping to elevate the way kids interact with LEGO, making play more reactive with lights and sounds primarily. The bricks will have a charge out of the box so that it can be played with instantly and sets with the system will all have, to my understanding, this base used to wirelessly recharge the brick batteries and perform updates when needed. The batteries on the bricks are supposed to last for up to 45 minutes of non-stop play and to get them fully charged shouldn't take more than 3 hours. To turn them on they need to be shaken and then connected or placed near a smart tag or minifigure so that the brick or bricks know what the play scenario is. The brick by itself does not perform any action besides activation and multiple bricks can interact with each other provided that there's a smart tag that supports that, though no one was able to tell me the maximum amount of bricks that could be connected with one another. Every brick is the same, packing the same tech and specs which produce lights in different colors and sounds, packs a gyroscope sensor letting it know its orientation or where it's facing, a distance sensor to know its relative position to another smart brick, tag or minifigure in a three-dimensional space indicating this via color coding, and finally a color sensor that can replicate what it's seeing to other bricks. The rooms where the demonstrations took place were very noisy so I can't really speak to the sound quality of the bricks but from what I could see and test myself this can do everything they're claiming to do which in today's standards for something this size isn't that impressive considering how far tech has come in the past few years yet still impressive for LEGO standards if you think of the sizes of current LEGO tech related products and pieces. These examples were all designed just to have us see what the smart bricks could do but then we were shown practical scenarios in upcoming LEGO Star Wars sets of how the technology will play out. These include Luke's X-Wing, featuring smart minifigures of Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia, with an updated R2-D2 minifigure that can turn its head due to the single stud on top, but features a squared back for the smart tile, which I'm not crazy about. And then it has interactive Imperial structures that unlock laser engine refueling and repair sounds. Darth Vader's TIE Fighter includes a smart minifigure of Darth Vader and interactive engine and battle effects, and then the throne room duel and a wing with smart minifigures of Luke, Vader and Emperor Palpatine, lightsaber sounds, a wing engine audio and the Imperial March. With Luke's X-Wing I was shown how the smart brick can use its sensors to trigger flying sounds for when you're swooshing the ship around, and placing the smart minifigures next to them will deploy character sounds, Luke with a bit of a gibberish voice to it, while R2-D2 will sound like the character we all know. There is a button on the X-Wing that when triggered will push the smart brick towards a red piece, which the color sensor uses to trigger shooting sounds for the X-Wing's laser cannons, which I found really clever. Darth Vader from the TIE Fighter set will also trigger a character voice when placed next to the smart brick, and the set features similar features to the ones from the X-Wing. Pushing it around will play out flying sounds and pressing a lever will make it shoot too. There is crossplay potential across the different sets it seems, but it wasn't clear to me if both ships have some sort of interaction when shooting against each other. There is however something like that in place with the throne room set, with the turret and the A-wing, though we were not shown that. Palpatine, one of the smart minifigures of the set, will trigger character gibberish voice and when placing the brick behind its throne when he's sitting there will make the brick play the Imperial March. 
On top of that, there's a fighting arena for Darth Vader and Luke to duel with their lightsabers against each other. And when the smart bricks are in place, I was expecting to hear lightsaber sounds, but it's playing blaster sounds instead. And while not all of the smart features of the three sets were showcased, there was time for a sneak peek into another Star Wars set with smart features. A most Eisley Cantina one with a dewback and a section of the Cantina building with two beef musicians. This is not what the entire set will look like though, as there will be more builds to it. What stood out to me in this one was the play function where the smart brick will play music when turned side to side. And as I was ready to hear the cantina tune, what I heard instead was nothing like it, which feels like the biggest missed opportunity if you ask me. The fact that these Star Wars sets were made around the smart brick and its play features means that their design will understandably be impacted by it. The models need to be sturdy to handle play and the places where the smart brick need to go need to be easily accessible by kids' hands. You know the target audience for these products. So for the adults complaining about the looks of these sets, I can understand where you're coming from, but these were not designed with you in mind. They're for kids to play with. And do you really need the millionth Lego X-Wing to fit your needs, uh, looks-wise? I'm curious to see actual reactions of kids playing with these, because there is a huge potential with the LEGO Smart Brick. I for one know that the Sonic Stinger was one of my favorite LEGO sets as a kid because of that massive brick that played lights and sounds. Could I make the sounds myself if I wanted? I could, and kids will always be able to keep doing that with their regular sets with regular bricks. This isn't forced upon anyone, and it certainly doesn't feel like the amount of regular releases will be impacted at all by the fact that there's a few smart brick-centric sets in the lineup. So it's kind of wild to see what people are saying online about this. Technology comes at a price, so it's no surprise to see how inflated the prices are for these when you consider the price per piece ratios. But again, nobody is really forced you to buy this. I do feel there's a lot of missed opportunities in how these were implemented in Star Wars sets, specifically with the sounds they were used. Maybe there's copyright issues or extra fees that would need to be paid if the cantina used its theme song, for instance. But if you've invested so much in this already, would that make that big of a difference in the end, as opposed to what you could get out of it? I'm not so sure. I really like the technology and the whole smart play concept at its core. The way it can be integrated with regular bricks and how it can elevate the play experience for kids in so many different ways. The claim of being screenless is something I value very highly these days as a father, as I think many parents will too. And I'm kinda curious to see where and how we will get to see more smart bricks being used across the LEGO portfolio but I have some concerns and things that I'm not loving about it. People and kids who get a bunch of these sets will over time collect a bunch of charging stations, and the idea of having a box of these, as I do with brick separators, feels wasteful to me. Maybe there will be expansions like Super Mario sets and not all smart play sets will have the charging station. But if we see this technology move to other themes, a stack of these is bound to happen. As a builder at heart, I'm trying to think of ways where adults could use these in their builds. I think the LEGO Smart Brick has a huge potential and there's some cool interesting opportunities to use the lights and the distance sensor for some cool gimmicks in custom LEGO creations, but there are two major flaws that could get in the way of making that easily possible. For starters, to activate the bricks, you need to shake them. There's no power button you can press on and off. You physically need to shake them for things to happen, which for Smaller builds and ships should be fairly simple, provided you're building them sturdy enough, but for buildings, large-scale dioramas and city settings, that's simply not an option, which kinda sucks. The second reason is, from what I was told in the London event from LEGO employees, you will not be able to customize actions on your bricks and will always be limited by the constraints of whatever smart tag you're using near it. So unless LEGO produces a smart tag that does exactly what you need for your custom builds, we will be stuck, for the time being, with X-Wing sounds and gibberish voices. That for me is the biggest downside of the system, and perhaps the biggest missed opportunity that this could offer to every type of consumer, not just kids, but adults alike. 
As I'm wrapping this up, a quick thanks to the LEGO company for hosting me in London for this event, which in no way told me what to say or not to say about this whole thing. These are my genuine experiences and opinions about the LEGO Smart Play system. I'd love to hear your constructive criticism down below, as that would be incredibly more helpful to LEGO in the understanding where they could improve this system, rather than just saying the sets are trash or completely overpriced. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.